coming right there. All right, guys, Carl here with Tactical Rifleman. This week, I want to talk about subguns, pistol caliber carbines for home defense. Why? Well, because, you know, pistol caliber carbines, they're the hot, they're, uh, they're popular, all the talk is pistol caliber carbines. The funny part, though, is there's a lot of haters of pistol caliber carbines. There's a lot of people that say, oh, pistol caliber carbines suck. They've got this, they don't do that. They're, oh, they, they're ruining the... USPSA. I understand there's haters. There's haters for everything. But if you start looking at some of the advantages of them, uh, this one, for example, uh, Tactical Edge, uh, RD9. Th this is a full-blown subgun right here, guys. But if you look at weight, comparing it to an AR, all right, this is a tax stamped uh, short barrel rifle, 5.56. Weight, this, this puppy right here is a lot lighter. It is, it's a lot lighter. Look at the difference in size. Now this is a registered short barrel rifle. This is a sub gun. Now granted, you know, this is a controlled, uh, you got a tax stamp, it's FFL. Uh, we'll get into it being full auto later. If you go with one that's got a, even a pistol brace on it, like this Banshee or the, uh, the, the uh, SIG MPX, Yes, this is a stock, but according to the ATF, this is also a pistol brace, arm brace. So guys, package wise, this allows it to be very, very small. Now, are you trying to conceal it underneath a suit jacket while you're doing a personal security detail? Um, no, but uh, if you've got small family members or you've got disabled family members, uh, for example, I was out at a range in Wichita, Kansas, and I had an eight-year-old little boy mastered the rules of firearm safety. He was safer on a range than a lot of the adults were. He ran hundreds of rounds through this little banshee because it weighs nothing. And he was able to run this thing because it was so small, so, so light. Right, so um, size-wise, if you've got small people in your household, remember, you're, you may not always be there. All right, but that home defense weapon is. So it needs to be usable by everybody that's at a responsible age that has the, the correct training. But if that's a 11 year old, if uh, that's mature enough and that you've trained well enough or whether it's your, your spouse or your 95 year old live-in grandmother or mother-in-law, it doesn't matter if they're capable of using the firearm, why would you not want to have a firearm that they could use to uh, defend the home while they're there. So um, anyways, there's lots of pros and cons, uh, but another big one is recoil, all right? So we'll, st we'll start with AR recoil. Now I'm not even gonna put it up against my shoulder, 5.56, five, and you'll see recoil-wise, this thing is a recoil. Gun recoil is a bunch, all right? But your, uh, your little sub guns, same thing, nine millimeter. Next to no, a lot less recoil, a lot less. Because uh, guys, it's nine millimeter compared to five, five, six. All right, now I understand you don't get a lot of the energy. I got that, I got that, but uh, when you're Talking about small people in your family, having that reduced recoil uh, is a big deal. It really is. So that's a plus for the pistol caliber carbines. So why all the haters? Why all the haters? The USPSA competitions, they've now allowed you to bring a pistol caliber carbine to compete against the guys that are using a pistol. All the other competitors that can actually shoot a pistol are complaining it's unfair it's unfair advantage unfair advantage i agree with that because it's a lot easier to shoot this sub gun at, out at distance it's a lot easier to shoot it at distance a lot easier to shoot it when you've got to take that accurate shot in that hostage situation now it's easier to take that low percentage shot and it's a lot more accurate at range i understand the competition guys say that's an unfair advantage now i want that to sink in in a home invasion, home defense, why would you not want to take any advantage possible? And take any advantage. So if your choice is, do I run a pistol for home defense or run a pistol caliber carbine for home defense, 
why would you not want to set yourself up with every advantage possible? So, I mean, it, it, if that's the way you're looking at it, if you're comparing it to a pistol by itself, guys, it just makes sense. Now, when you, you're talking accuracy at long range, pistol caliber ammo was built to be fired basically out of a barrel that long, right? So if you're running a nine mil or pistol caliber rifle, for example, a full length nine millimeter rifle, that longer barrel, everybody thinks you get more accuracy. That's true with 556, it's true with 308, but be, all your pistol gunpowder is burnt up. So when you get to a 22 inch nine mil barrel, you're actually starting to slow down that that bullet, you're starting to lose muzzle velocity. Most of your small pistol caliber carbines uh, they have a short barrel. Everybody thinks, well, that's robbing you accuracy. It is robbing you accuracy in a shorty AR. If you're going with a short barreled AR barrel, you're losing muzzle velocity every time you start chopping inches off of it to make it shorter. But that's not the case with the pistol caliber carbine. So long as you're running a four or five inch barrel, you're getting enough muzzle velocity that that pistol bullet is designed for. Now what that does is that gives you the advantage, the, the advantage of having a shorter barrel and then being able to add a suppressor to it like this. Uh, this is a dead air. It's set up for 45. I've got the nine mil uh, shoot through washer in it right now, but it is a great uh, suppressor to run on a pistol caliber carbine home defense. Now, why is that? Why am I big on pushing a suppressor? You'll notice this puppy right here, it's already got the suppressor built into it, right? The, the uh, tactical edge one, it, it's got the suppressor built right there. Why is this so important? Think home defense guns. If you've seen my other videos, best gun for home defense, what do I say you need to have? You need a carbine for home defense. I don't care if it's an AI, I don't care if it's an AK. In this case, this thing has all the fire controls of an AR. So all my muscle memory from using my work gun is all the same. I'm just now running pistol caliber. So besides that, for a home defense rifle, you gotta have a red dot, all right? And then I want you to have a flashlight on it. If you have those two on that gun for defense of your household, you're setting yourself up for success. But there's one small piece people miss, and that is running that suppressor right there. What the suppressor does, guys, is it's gonna get rid of the sound, yes, right? But the other thing it does is it gets rid of that big flash. And, and here's why, you'll notice I'm wearing ear pro because I'm shooting in the middle of this video. But you wake up the middle of the night most people aren't gonna take the time to put on a set of pelters. Home alarm went off, dogs are barking, it's probably nothing, right? Are you gonna take the time to put on a plate carrier and everything? You might, you might not. I probably won't. So having that can on my wife's SIG MPX, right? And going and checking it out, she needs to shoot, heaven forbid, she don't have to worry about putting on ear pro ahead of time. Here's what, here's what happened, that gun goes off. You think a pistol's loud out on the flat range, try shooting it inside of a vehicle or inside of a small room. That sound wave reflects off of each wall, ceiling, floor, and you're eating it tenfold. They're a lot louder. The other thing that people miss, even if you put on your ear pro, is in a dark household, you get that huge fireball coming out the end of the gun and your, your suppressors mitigate a lot of that flash. They really do. So I'm big on running suppressors on it also. It's just, it, they're made for it. They're easy to suppress. It's a lot easier to shoot a sub gun with a suppressor on it accurately than it is to shoot my pistol with a suppressor on the end of it. See the difference in size? It's roughly the same size, guys. Why would you not want something with a stock, a light, and a good red dot on it. Anyways, just, I want you to chew on all those things. Now, uh, there are some cons out there. There are, there are a few cons. People start talking, well, it's the ammo's not as good as an AR. I agree, okay, 5.56 five, is a great home defense round. But if you're gonna run a pistol caliber carbine, the, don't run ball ammo, all right? But there are good brands out there. I got uh, G9, makes a good, what we call an external hollow point. It's a milled copper, kind of like a drill bit, but they, what they do is they go the opposite direction of what the lands and grooves do in your, uh, in your barrel. 
And when that happens, as it turns, and it, when it hits fluids, basically the human body, remember you can compress a gas, you can compress a solid. Think about hitting the table with a hammer, but you can't compress a fluid. So what happens is when that, those, those fins hit that fluid, you get a lot more secondary cavitation. You're causing a lot more tissue damage than you would with a, uh, with a regular ball round. Now, standard hollow points are great. I got that. But the problem with standard hollow points home defense, if it goes through and hits a layer of drywall, that drywall is going to fill that whole tip of that hollow point. It's not going to expand. And now you're just running ball ammo through the walls of your house. That's not what you want. So anyways, the, uh, G9 makes good non-frangible uh, ammo. And then Inceptor makes a very similar shaped round, still has the fins cut on the tip. I like it because it's frangible ammo. Don't get me wrong, it's tough frange. It'll still go through walls. If the guy's hiding behind the corner and you need to get through the wall, you can get through the wall without it breaking up. But once it hits that bad guy, it immediately disintegrates really cutting down the chance of having collateral damage to people that uh, innocent people that are behind your intended target ammo selection mitigates a lot of that now, uh, can you get sexier rounds for 556 five, yeah of course you can all right so yes 556 five, ammo is uh, more effective you can get good home defense rounds for the 556 five, but there are good uh, choices for home defense ammo for pistol caliber carbines might be a little bit weaker but uh, you know an energy and delivering that energy to the target that's everything there there are a few differences though when you go to buy those uh those pistol caliber carbines a lot of pistol caliber carbines guys there's lots of ar designed pistol caliber carbines out there that run off of either the old uzi magazines or they run off of glock mags and I'm here to tell you, a lot of them don't run. They don't, because what they did was they took a weapon and parts made for 5.56, and basically tried to just get away with changing the mag well. They don't uh, lock uh, the bolt carrier group to the rear on the last round. You'll have a lot of jamming issues. They're fun to plink with, right? But if you are going to spend the money to get a pistol caliber uh, carbine for home defense, I want you to invest in a quality gun that's worthy of protecting your family. So uh, the SIG MPX, fairly reliable gun, not the most reliable, but a fairly reliable choice. And you notice all the controls are very similar to all your mechanics that you use for an AR. Little uh, different designed magazine, a little bit harder to find. But other than that, I don't have a lot of gripes with the SIG MPX. Uh, one thing I like, the Banshee, it takes uh, Glock magazines. So if you're running, and it locks last round, bolt locks open and everything. Uh, if I run out with this, I can, or I can pull out my next magazine for my pistol, and guys, it will, it'll fire. Great little gun. I was surprised at how reliable this thing is. I tried to tell them the Banshee won't run. It's an AR, none of them run. Very pleasantly surprised. And then guys, the, uh, this puppy right here, the Cadillac, perhaps Ferrari is a better word. Perhaps M1 Abrams is, would be the better one because this thing right here, I'm here to tell you, it is awesome, right? It runs off of Glock mags, same thing. So I can use those Glock mags. It's suppressed, it's got the red dot. Uh, all my controls are the same as the AR. So I can do my single shots with it. Not a lot of flash, not a lot of blast, right? Why? Because it's got the integral suppressor and you can throw it over to the fun. Guys, you smell that? Guys, that's the smell of freedom right there. So anyways, I just wanted to touch a little bit on our pistol caliber carbines they're fun to shoot there are the haters but uh haters if you're a hater out there i want you to take a step back reevaluate yourself in the mirror per perhaps uh search your soul a little bit and decide why you're bashing this thing if you're bashing this thing because it gives you an advantage over this brother i want every advantage that i can give my family in my household so for home defense guys 
You can bash it if you want, but I'm here to tell you, Tactical Rifleman and the rest of the crew, we are all on board for pistol caliber carbines for home defense. Anyways, you know the deal. I want my haters and my guys that have fought pros and cons. Leave the comments below. And, uh, you know, I read them. I respond to most of them. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Y'all take care. Shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.